Sooner or later, when you least expect it, there comes a point of no return, a dead end from which there seems no escape, a moment in time, a moment of crisis. so terribly near, perhaps Mark Foreman would never have taken the wrong turn. For that's what it was, a very wrong turn. Our tale of suspense, Along a Dark Road, featuring Jack Morton, will begin immediately following this message. I ever want to come. Whew. Well, I guess the car's in one piece. That lightning couldn't have missed me by five feet. I wish it wasn't so dizzy. And I'm all turned around. Somewhere along here, I've got to turn off the highway and get on the road to Brightville. Well, let's see if she'll start. Come on, baby. Come on. Great. Well, so far, so good. Now, uh, oh, there's a road of some kind. Maybe this is it. Jerry said it'd be the first road to the right after passing the water tower at Sand Hill. But I'm, I'm not sure that that was the Sand Hill water tower or not. No, well, this must be it. So dark, though, I can't tell. Lightning did that too. Man, I'm almost out of gas. Must have been driving an hour at least. And hey, hey, what do we got here? Oh, it's a town of some sort. Yeah, aha. A gas station. Yeah, there's a guy locking up. Say, could you sell me some gas before you close up, mister? Well, yeah, just uh, two gallons. Huh? Is, is that all I can have? Well, unless you got a priority. Hey, what what the heck you got here? What? I mean, what is this thing? What, my car? You kidding? It's a VW. A VW? Hey, you've seen a VW before. Listen, look, I got, I got a problem. I'm trying to get to Brightville. It, is it near here? I, I've never heard of it. Brightville? Where is that? Well, that's what I'm asking you. You see, I was up on the highway when the storm hit, and I almost got hit by lightning. Uh, just a minute. Wait a minute. What storm? What storm? I mean, you didn't get a thunderstorm and a cloud burst? It's, oh, no, I see. Yeah, everything is still dry here. Well, you know, your uh, car don't look like it's been through no storm to me. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm afraid I can't sell you that gas. Why not? Well, the curfew, you know. And uh, this here's the chief coming over. Any, uh, any trouble, Jim? No, no trouble. Well, now, let's, uh, let's get some lights uh, doused over there. Douse them, come on. All right, I was just closing up. Well, now, what have we got here? Uh, this your car? Yeah. Now, uh, what did you say it's called again, mister? It's a VW. You, you guys have never seen a Volkswagen before? Volkswagen? <laughs> that sounds kind of German, doesn't it? It is. This is made in Germany. You 
You mean to stand there? How do you come to be driving a kraut car, mister? Let's see your papers. What do you mean, my papers? All right, well, come on. Out of the car now. Here we go. Come on. What the hell do you think you're doing? I got his uh, wallet here, Chief. Give that wanted. back here. What is this? You know, you know, I knew there was something fishy. I mean, him him driving in just at curfew time and all, and I, I didn't know that was a Nazi car. Well, something's funny, all right. All right, let's see the wallet. Yeah, here you go. Huh? Yeah. Well, what do you what do you call these things here? What things? These here, yeah, these uh, celluloid cards. Celluloid? They're plastic. Those are credit cards. Say, would you mind letting go of my arm? Hey, what's your name? Mark. Mark. Mark Foreman. Foreman. F O R M A N N. German name? Yeah, my grandfather, great grandfather, somebody came over from the old country. Say, now wh- what's all this bit about Germans anyway? You, 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 some kind of bigot? Well, now, Sonny boy, I, I guess you figured we don't know there's a war on around here. A war? <laughs> there's a war on? You damn right. Now, right, wait, wait a minute now, Jim. There's something funny about this whole setup here. Now. Suppose you tell me where you drove in from tonight, Mr. Uh, Foreman. Well, look, I was I was driving up from Santa Barbara. I'm looking... On the what road? On the freeway. The what road? The freeway. I turned off onto some old road. I'm looking for Brightville. I got into this lightning storm, and I must have made the wrong turn somewhere. I don't know. But all I wanted was some gas. Honestly. Where are you from? I'm living in Los Angeles now. I'm originally from Arizona. Uh-huh. Well, look, I, I don't know anything about your town curfew. I don't even know what town this is. It's called Wilsonville. Wilsonville? Uh, I didn't see it on the map. Now, uh, let's, let's see your map. Well, it's in the car. Yeah, I, I see it over there. Start on the seat. I'll get it. Okay. Right. You're kind of strange. Ever since that lightning hit right almost on top of the car. Here, here it is, Chief. Okay, let's, let's have a look at your map here. There. Yeah. Hey, where'd you get this? I, I, I don't know, a gas station somewhere. Well, it's it's a California map, all right. There's Bakersfield there and Sacramento. Here's Los Angeles, uh, Santa Barbara. But uh, these roads here, these red highways, they're wrong. They don't exist. They sure do. They're freeways. Look, look, look here. Now, look, here, here, here's the freeway I took up from L.A. to Santa Barbara... And you can see her how it continues Mr. Right. Foreman, Look. now, we don't have no freeways in the state of California. Same as we don't have no town named Brightville. I'm afraid you're going to have to do some explaining. Me? I've got to do some explaining. About what? About what you're doing with a German vehicle and a phony map and identification. It isn't phony. All right, all right. Jimmy, you get in that car of his and follow me down to civil defense headquarters. You arresting me? I'm taking you down for interrogation. Oh. Then we're going to find out what a young guy like you is doing driving a German car when every able-bodied kid in this country is supposed to be fighting World War II. Okay, now let's let's have it easy in here. Ah, all right, boys. Now, I think we got us a real hot one tonight. All right, foreman. Now empty your pockets right here on the table. Now, that's right. That's right. Okay, now Stan, you go to work on this stuff, will you? Well, what's he doing? Uh, Mr. Polson here is our credentials expert. Took a course on how to detect forged identification and such as that. Now this guy foreman tells me he came up from L.A. And now, just uh, tell us, would you just uh, where in L.A.? Well, Venice, actually. And when did you last see L.A., Mr. Foreman? Uh, this morning, about 8 o'clock. Ah. Well, how'd it look? Well, same as ever. The same as it looked ever since I moved out here three years ago. Uh, Chief. Yes, Stan. Look at this here dollar bill he had. And the coins. I don't, sir. I see. What? Have you ever seen anything like well, that? Well, that does it, Stan. Well, Mr. Foreman, I for now I got a charge to hold you on. Yeah? Counterfeit. Oh. 
One of the worst jobs I've ever seen. The dates on this money are all 25, 30 years of future. This here coin, uh, this half dollar, whose head's that supposed to be? It's a Kennedy half dollar. And who's Kennedy supposed to be? He was the president. Oh, okay. Now, all right, now what is this anyway? That's what I want to know, Mr. Foreman. What's a guy doing with the bunch of money marked 1969 and 1972 and such when it's 1943? What? Looks like somebody really slipped up when they furnished you your pocket money. Hey, now, what, what, what year did you say this was? 1943. <laughs> huh? hey, hey, all right. Now, come on. Come on. Now, now this is really good. I mean, you, you people will put me on real good, but, hey, it can't happen that way. I mean, I read all the science fiction books, too, you know. It never happens this way. You just don't drive into a time warp. I mean, you need a special machine, some, some kind of gadget. So you, you better refine your act. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you guys ought to watch Mission Impossible. Yeah, okay. Hey, uh, all right, everybody in your post now. Uh, hey, Stan, would you hang on to that money and stuff? Now, Foreman, now, until you decide to tell us where you came from and what you're doing here, I'm afraid you're under arrest. For your own safety, I'm putting you downstairs in the shelter. Listen. Listen, all of you. All of you. I could save you a lot of trouble. Now, for your information, the United States never got bombed. And if you're pretending it's 1943, that's fine. But they never got to us. Believe me. Yeah, yeah. Tell that to my wife. She was in L.A. the night they bombed the downtown. All right, Stan. Take him down. Stay with him. Again. Uh, what do you do, Paulson? Uh, for a living, I mean. I'm a pharmacist. Own a store down here in town. A druggist, huh? And, and you tell me the year is 1943? Of course it's 1943. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Paulson. I was born in 1943. Thirty years ago. The year is 1973. Sure, sure. It is. All right. I said sure. Whatever you say. Now, look. Look, suppose I can prove to you it's 1973. Would you believe me? Well, guess I'd have to. Yeah, okay. Now, you got a radio. Uh, yeah, there's one around here somewhere. There's one down here so we can listen to the invasion now for when it comes. Invasion? What invasion? The coast. When the Japs invade the coast. But they never invaded. Oh, here it is. Battery set. Batteries are any good. All right, all right, all right. Now, get, now give it here. Give it here. Whew, what an antique. Okay, now if we can get this thing to work. Batteries are probably dead. Here, let me have a look. No, no, no. no. There's, there's that little light on the dial there. Well, oh, there we go. Okay, now. Now, we ought to be able to pick up a good, strong L.A. station or one from San Francisco. The stations go off the air when there's an air raid alert, you know. Most... Oh, there Los Angeles is returning to the air now following the red alert. Here are the latest war developments from the Blue Network newsroom in Los Angeles. Another Japanese bombing strike has caused some damage over the beach areas within the hour. Unconfirmed reports say portions of the Douglas plant at Santa Monica were destroyed. An unknown number of civilian residences also report damage. As usual, there was no immediate report of casualties. Air defense spokesman estimated that between 60 and 75 planes took part in the raid tonight. At least five planes were shot down. Oh, God, I don't, I don't believe it. I can't believe all this. It's, it's a freak. A fake. It's, it's got to be a fake. Well, then, what would you believe? 
Newspaper? Oh, they can be fake, too. Uh, I got a whole plan's newspapers down here. Here, grab a handful. All right, all right. Look, these are all... These are all from 1943. That doesn't prove anything. You see, what I think's happened to you is... You were caught in one of the bombings, probably. Got shell shot. Now, in a case like that, it's not impossible for your mind to sort of reject the present. You know? then, then how do you explain the dates on the money I have? Well, yeah. Yeah, and the credit cards you've never seen before, right? Now, look at here. I, I don't have to explain these things. Seems to me you're the one who has some explaining to do. Now, Chief Doty isn't a well-educated man, but he's nobody's fool. And sooner or later, he'll find out the truth, or one of them Army intelligence officers will. And just between you and me, I'd a heck of a lot rather have Doty work on me than one of those jokers. You get what I mean? Mr. Folsom, maybe I can convince you of, of something. I can tell you exactly what the future will bring. Would you like to know that? Huh? Do, do you think I could sit here and make all this up? You know the date this war will end? The Germans will surrender in, uh, I think it's May of 1945. Then the Japanese will surrender in August of 45. And, and you, you, know, you know what else? The reason they surrender is because our country will destroy two of their cities in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And we're going to do it with an atomic bomb bigger than any bomb you ever heard of. Hmm. That's so. Yes, and another thing. President Roosevelt is going to die in 1945. Well, there, you see? <laughs> now, there's a flaw. Now, what do you mean? You say Roosevelt's supposed to die in 1945? Yes, he did, and uh, I think it was April. Son, Roosevelt died three years ago during the campaign of 1940. Wendell L. Wilkie is president. <laughs> You missed us tonight. Everything okay there, Stan? Oh, fine, Chief. Now, by the way, did Mr. Foreman decide to tell you what kind of game he's playing? I'm not playing any game. I, I don't know why or how, but I'm in the wrong time. Look, look, I can see why you suspect me of being a spy, maybe you're an agent or something, but because of my car and everything. But believe me, I'm an American. But I'm confused. Yeah, well... What do you say, Stan? I'd say he's suffering from shell shock or delusion or something. But there's the matter of his funny little car and his money and those cards. You know, this may sound dangerous to you, Chief, but I think the most intelligent thing to do is turn him loose. Let him try to get back to where he came from. Yeah, but back where? Well, where he came from. He, he's no spy. All right. Okay, on the one condition. All right, Foreman. Now, you get your car and two gallons of gas, and you hightail it back to wherever you came from. You, you mean it? Just one thing, though. I'm going to follow you. Well, okay, okay, sure, only... Only I don't know how I got in this time, in this place. What What if I can't get back? Well, now, that's going to be just too bad, then. <laughs> Either that or none of this ever happened. Only thing is, only I, I can see their lights of the chief's car behind me. I gotta get back. How was that? Thunder. Thunder. Yeah, like I was when I got on the wrong road, maybe. Maybe I can head back into the storm and get back again. Gee, rain. Whew, it's cloudburst. It's just, just like before. But they're still behind me. I, I've, got, I've got to get away. I don't remember the road. Narrow. Twists and turns. Is that turn? Flash, will you stand? Oh, and uh, get us that invocation. Uh, uh, unit one to Brightville Radio. 
Uh, on that Volkswagen you were chasing, get a make on California plate 143 HPF. And send the coroner. Four miles off the freeway on the Brightfield Road. I'll stand by till he gets here. Unit one out. His ID says his name F O R M A N N. Mark one. Address in Venice. Venice? Gee. Yeah, I wonder what the hell he was doing way up here on a lousy night like this. Finally found his way back along a dark road. Featured on Crisis was Jack Morton as Mark Foreman, with Mark Wayne, Douglas Young, Ross Perry, and Bob Robertson. Along a Dark Road was written and produced by yours truly, Jim French. Join us next time for Crisis. <laughs> 